by intervals. These are the distances between us and a threat during a confrontation. Uh, contact distance. This is uh, the interval in which we can touch our attacker if both of us reaches out or anything closer. So I've got my hand out, he's got his hand out. We call that contact distance. Contact distance is approximately uh, five feet or closer. At this distance, any attacker would be able to make contact immediately or make contact simultaneously with one step toward the attackee. At this distance, our full attention must be on the threat and if possible, we should be in a stance that will allow us to avoid or counter an attack. And just to show that, uh, we'll show those in a second. Uh, at this distance, we need to know the answers to the following questions. What is the level of aggression? Is the threat most likely to attack with a right or left hand or even a kick? Uh, is he likely to deploy a weapon? What weapons are available to him and to us? Uh, where are the escape routes? Is this threat alone or is he with somebody? Uh, if you have remained vigilant in your awareness, uh, you'll be able to have these answers uh, for all these questions. You'll be able to have answers for all these questions. In general, our defensive mindset must also include a plan. For example, when the threat does X, I will do Y. Uh, if we intend to use a weapon, we should immediately uh, we should immediately gain a little more distance between us and get that weapon deployed and issue a final warning if we think it will defuse the situation. Stop or I'll shoot. I have a knife. Well, that's enough. Now, you know, when this weapon, the whole weapon thing, uh, in these type of situations where I'm going to issue a warning, I would much rather have the knife in my left hand when I issue a warning than a pistol in my right hand when I issue a warning because once I've, uh, what's the word, uh, once I have a uh, negligent, uh, well, I'm drawing a blank right now. But once I have exposed this weapon, I have a problem if I'm not going to shoot it. Because this guy can say I have... Oh exhibition my, of a deadly weapon. Uh, exhibition of a deadly weapon. That's a word for it. But there's another word that I'm looking for that I've just... It starts with a D. And I'm just brain dead right now because uh, it's hot out here. We've been doing all this stuff. But uh, uh, I, I definitely can't just go around displaying my handgun when I don't like the way things are happening to get my way, okay? I can't just, uh, I just can't display this thing negligently to get people to do what I wanted to. Now I have become the threat. However, if I pull this out and I say, stay the F back, I'm not gonna have near the problem I'm gonna have if I pull this gun and say, stay the F back. And for some reason, the situation can in be interpreted to where maybe I'm in the wrong. I just, I'd much rather have the knife in my hand than the handgun in my hand. It is called, it's not negligent display. Of course, it's not negligent discharge. It's all over in my hand, man, uh, the handgun, man. But anyways, uh, you, have to be, uh, you have to be careful about that because there's laws against that, pulling out a handgun and using that in a threatening manner. Uh, even if it's a self-defense situation and you don't need to discharge a weapon and you pull it out, you're flirting with uh, the law not being in your favor at that point. Again, this is gonna be viewed a lot less uh, harmful. In other words, when the police get there and you say, this guy was uh, threatening me or acting in a threatening manner, so I pulled out my knife to keep him away from me, that's gonna be viewed as more sane than I pulled out my gun because I was scared and he was acting in a threatening manner. It's just it's just not gonna be looked at in the same manner. You know, they talk about the knife being the bad guy weapon. Well, in that kind of situation, especially when you tell a cop, well, I had a gun, but I just pulled my knife, then he's gonna look at you as a more intelligent person who's looking at his options uh, in a more intelligent fashion. So anyways, uh, uh, Brandishment, brandishment, brandishment of a handgun. That's where you can be put in jail quite quickly. So you have to be very careful with that. Negligent brandishment of a handgun is going to get you in jail very quickly, whereas they don't have the same laws for when you brandish one of these. It's not automatic. You're going to jail. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, legally, again, it's best to keep our weapons concealed until we are certain that it's necessary and that we will use a weapon immediately when it is necessary. 
Uh, it's also important to note uh, that while unskilled fighters may have shorter contact distances, uh, skilled fighters will definitely have longer contact distances. Uh, this is because a skilled attacker will be able to hit an opponent, an opponent uh, in one simultaneous striking and stepping motion from seven feet or even further away. Uh, skilled fighters have longer contact distances than unskilled fighters because of their training. Hopefully we'll be the one that is more skilled uh, when we have a confrontation. So again, even though we're looking at you know this, this hand reach as far as being our, uh, our imminent contact distance where we need to be on our high alert, big guard type thing, uh, you know, if you're messing with a, uh, a competitive Taekwondo guy, uh, you know, 10 feet might not be far enough away uh, to keep him from uh, sliding up with a round kick off the side of your head. So again, who you are fighting and, you know, the guy you're looking at, you have to make some, uh, some quick decisions in the heat of the moment. Uh, so let's talk about imminent contact distance. Imminent contact distance. This is any area beyond contact distance to one step outside of contact distance. Again, at this distance, our full attention should be on the threat, though a defensive posture is not necessarily required. Uh, if we intend to use a weapon in our defense, it should be made ready to draw and used immediately if we feel we'll suffer serious bodily injury or worse. And again, you have to be very uh, knowledgeable on what the laws are where you're at. In Florida, uh, I'm pretty good to go. Uh, let's see, uh, and again, that serious bodily injury is where I'm good to go. If I fear that this guy is capable of causing serious bodily injury and he shows the intent and capability, I can go to lethal force right at that point to defend myself. Uh, let's see, uh, in some cases we'll be, we will be able to use our movement to obviously stay out of contact distance from a serious threat and a lethal response may not be justified. Again, it depends on where you're at. Uh, in Florida, I have no duty to retreat, so I can immediately use that uh, lethal force without having to try to move away from this threat. Then we've got intermediate contact distance. This again is beyond contact distance. Uh, at this distance, we do not need to give our full attention to the threat, and if possible, we should retreat from the area. Uh, think of it as you can touch, you can almost touch, and you can probably retreat safely as far as those different distances. And uh, what we'll do is we'll turn the camera over here and just give you a quick look at the... So again, stand over here. Just reach your hand out. So this is uh, contact distance from here in. And again, if this guy's here and he's got a knife, bam, I have a problem. So I need to be on my full guard, even if he doesn't have a knife. Bam, I need to be on my full guard. Uh, even if I don't take that step, bam, I can get to that without even taking that first step. So with one motion, I am able to strike him. Now, uh, let's go back here just a little bit. I'm gonna put that hand out. And once I'm here, one step outside of that, this is hugely different. I mean, now I'm definitely gonna have to take a step just to get within range. I have to take this step and now I'm in range. This gives him a lot of time to react to what I'm going to do, especially if I step, just step back. Or, smarter, if you step to the side, now I'm going to come this way and he's got me flanked. So I have a prop. So this guy, he's an advanced student, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, so again, here we are here. Contact distance, I'm going to be able to hit him quite easily. Here, I'm going to have to take a definite move forward before I can even get to strike him. So does he need to be in a full you know, stance like this here, you know, hey, what's up? You know, he doesn't need to be there. He could be here. And now as I step forward, he can get into a full combat ready stance, okay? And again, I'm holding my hands like I'm empty handed even though I have the knife on. Now, once I go one step out of here again, well, now there's a door over there. Uh, maybe there's uh, cars over there he can run behind. It's gonna again, take a lot of effort on my part to get to him. And for him, uh, he definitely has a chance to get the full speed before I'm at full speed where he is. So, you know, if I start running at him, he can turn and start running away, and that's where I'm gonna have a problem. So that's where retreat is uh, much more viable, a much more viable option. Here, if he goes to retreat, go ahead and turn as I come, you know, he's gonna get cut. He's still within that range. At this range here, once I'm out here, now he kinda has a choice. I mean, he still has a problem, I'll come with a knife because he's not gonna be ready to move immediately 
but he's going to be able to take a defensive posture before I get on top of him, or as he did earlier, make that uh, evasion step to the side. Uh, but once I'm back here, I might be out of the picture even, uh, he's got plenty of time to turn tail and run before I have a chance to get any uh, attack upon him. So again, that's contact distance, uh, imminent contact distance, and intermediate distance. And this, of course, is important to knife fighting uh, because of when you need to be ready uh, for him to attack and when you need to have your knife deployed uh, if this guy is, is uh, brandishing a weapon himself. Okay? So that's pretty much it for interval.